Okay? Let's take it to level one and a half. That was level, well, that was like subterranean level. That was simple. We've already done those, right? Something like this we would have done as well. Okay? Probably back in unit four. But just as a nice little review. Solve for x. Isolate the trig term, but we want that term to be in terms of sine, cosine, or tangent. So we substitute something in place of this. We're taking the secant out. What is secant equivalent to, or what's, what's something I can substitute in place of secant? Because we don't talk about arc secant functions, right? We've tried to streamline things here. We have arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. We don't talk about arc secant, and that's okay that we don't do that, all right? Instead, let's replace this with its cosine equivalent, which would be 1 over cosine x. So now we have that statement. And what's coming next? Those of you that have had my classes many times, we're solving for a variable that's in the denominator of a fraction and the other side of the equation is not a fraction, it's a whole number, well not a whole number, it's, but it's not a fraction, it's not a variable, so what can I do? I can pull the old switcheroo here. Right, that's our shortcut when what we're solving for is in the bottom. Now keep in mind, when we talk about the switcheroo, we're taking the entire denominator, not just the part that I want, we have to take the entire denominator out. If this said cosine x plus 1, I'd take cosine x plus 1 out. Okay? So now we're here. Now we have isolated our trigonometric term, and we want to take the arc cosine of both sides. But having the experience that we have with the unit circle, we know we're not supposed to have this radical in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by radical 2. Not negative radical 2, just radical 2. I just don't want the radical down there. Okay? And we end up with radical 2 on top. On the bottom we have 2. The negative that's in the fraction, you'll recall, can go in the denominator, it can go in the numerator, it can go in front. It doesn't matter. Okay? So we have this. That fits a little bit better that's something that we're used to. Okay. Now we have our isolated term. We can take the arc cosine. We can take the arc cosine. So we have x equals the arc cosine of negative radical 2 over 2. What pi values have x coordinates, because we're cosines now, what pi values have x coordinates of radical 2 over 2, or excuse me, negative, where are the x coordinates negative in quadrants 3 and 4, and radical 2 over 2, that's our pi over 4 angles, and the two pi over 4 angles that are in quadrants 3 and 4 are 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over Okay. Pretty unassuming from the beginning. Took a little bit of massaging, right? Bringing in the cosine, the switcheroo, the rationalization of the denominator, and then arc cosine. 